Hello everybody and welcome back to the video about the Zabbix proxy installation and we will also talk a little bit about the installation process itself, about the benefits of the proxies and uh, some possible risks or the downsides. So on the screen I have the same Zabbix installation from the previous videos when we installed the Zabbix server with a MariaDB backend database and also Zabbix Java Gateway that is monitoring Tomcat application currently. So let's continue with the proxy. I will go back to my CLI which is the same box of this Zabbix server and uh, same story no SL Linux, no firewall. Uh, we have a Zabbix repo 3.4 already added so we just need to install a new package and the package name will be Zabbix proxy and then just like in the case with a server after the last dash we need to choose a database for the proxy and in terms of the database there is usual choice from MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, IBM DB2 and uh, for the proxy also SQLite database engine is possible but I personally don't like to use it. The only benefit of SQLite is that it is able to create database for the proxy automatically. So immediately after you will start the binary, the Zabbix proxy process, database will be created automatically. The bad thing about SQLite is it is basically a single file database. So as soon as your proxy monitored environment will start to grow and let's say your proxy will start to process around to 1.5 thousand metrics per second there is a big chance that your SQLite database will start to corrupt because it's definitely not a enterprise level database. It is pretty good for small installations but personally I always choose MySQL. So yum install Zabbix proxy MySQL dash yes to accept all the installation process and the proxy is installed. So as mentioned the proxy also requires the database and we must create a new database so I will go to my SQL CLI where we do have already our Zabbix server database and be careful here do not point the proxy database to the Zabbix server database. It is absolutely okay to use the same database engine and I will do the same thing in this video but you must create a new database for the proxy. So I will type create database Zabbix underscore proxy and again same requirement about UTF-8. So case sensitive character set UTF-8 late utf8 underscore bin database is created and again we need a Zabbix user that will have access to this database so grant all privileges on Zabbix underscore proxy database dot star which means all of the tables and to Zabbix at localhost so Zabbix database user will be able to connect to the database only from the local host identified by and then in the text type the password for the Zabbix user semicolon and done so let's go control C out of the MySQL because the database is created now we need to import the schema uh, basically the same story as with a Zabbix server the schema is located in CD uh, user share doc Zabbix proxy MySQL uh, the last part probably will be different in your case so for each different version of the package of course the location of the of the scheme also will be different. So move to this folder and you will find inside a SEMA SQL JZ and just like in the first video I will do a zcat schema and pipe it inside of my SQL but not in the Zabbix server database but in a Zabbix proxy database. Click enter takes like a second to or three done we can verify again by going to the MySQL uh, show databases 
we can see our Zabbix proxy database. So use Zabbix proxy to go inside this Zabbix proxy database, show tables, and we can see that we do have all of the tables required for the proxy to work properly with all of the default information. So this part is done. Then again, we need to edit the config file of the proxy. Nothing, nothing changes. All of the configuration files for the Zabbix are stored in the Etsy Zabbix, zabbixproxy.conf. And what do we need to change here? The proxy mode. Proxy mode default is zero. And you are also able to choose between two proxy modes, which basically is active and passive. What does active and passive means? If you leave this as it is in the active mode, it means, it means that the proxy will be initiating the connection to the server, requesting the configuration, and proxy will be sending all the data to the server. So in this case, you don't need any incoming connections on the proxy side which is kind of good, very good for some security reasons, especially if you have proxy installed on some, uh, some branches of your offices, different countries, different locations. Uh, you don't need to worry about the firewall. Maybe IP of the proxy host is changing, so you are using an active mode and you just need to specify location of the server, where the Zabbix server is located. If you will choose the passive mode, which I personally, personally do not recommend, then the server will be responsible to initiate a connection to the proxy, send the configuration. Inside the configuration there will be data about which hosts, what IPs, what checks, items, update intervals have to be polled, and then the, the server will connect to the proxy to poll the collected data, which is also worse in terms of the performance. Because if we're using a passive mode, internal processes of the server will have to connect to the proxy, request the data, they will wait some milliseconds or seconds in terms of, uh, in case of bad connection, then get the data and only then close the connection. Instead, in the same amount of the time, that could be able to monitor different agents, different proxies. So when we're using an active mode, then the proxy is just sending already collected data and server has just uh, to catch it. So it is a lot better in terms of the performance. Next, server. Uh, in our case, the proxy is on the same machine with a server, so the IP is localhost, server port, exactly the same. Then the host name. This is very important if you want your proxy to work. The host name must match exactly with the host name of the proxy configured in the administration proxies. So I will add new proxy, call it Sabex Cookbook. Proxy mode is active and click add. Done. Then host name here in the config file must be exactly the same, case sensitive. If it will not match, your proxy will simply not work. It, will, it won't be able to communicate with a Zabbix server. Listening port. I will change this only for this task because I have a Zabbix server already running on this machine. And the listening port of the Zabbix server also is 151. So if I won't change this, I will not be able to simply start the proxy. So for this, for this task, for this video, I will change the listen port to 100, let's say 55. It doesn't matter. You can pick any port that is free. Then scroll down, what do we need next, DB name, DB name Zabbix underscore proxy, which is exactly as I've created in the MySQL, then scroll down DB user Zabbix and DB password also is Zabbix. Again, all the parameter names are case sensitive, be careful, otherwise you won't be able to start your proxy process. And uh, that's about it. So in the config file, there are also a lot of parameters like uh, 
amount of started processes, the polars, trappers, uh, Java polars, HTTP polars, uh, the size of the caches, history sinkers, all of the same processes you can find on the server side. Uh, also important fact is that by default the proxy will send the data to the server each second. Same for the active proxy, same for the pro uh, passive proxy. And uh, if there will be a breakdown in the internet connection and the proxy won't be able to send the data to the server, then by default proxy will hold one hour of the backlog in the database. So if the network maintenance network when the network will be down will be less than one hour you won't lose any data after the problem will be fixed proxy will send all the backlog to the server these parameters can also be changed in the Zabbix proxy config file so you could change uh, sending of the data let's say not each second but each uh, 20 seconds you could change to keep a backlog in case of the communication problems not one hour but uh, five hours but be careful if you have a lot of the proxies and uh, let's say five proxies and you have a con configuration configured to store 10 hours of the backlog and then there will be indeed some kind of the network problem for 10 hours and you have quite a big proxies then imagine all amount of the data that will be incoming to the Zabbix server after the problem will be solved there is quite a big risk which of course depends also from your hardware specification of the Zabbix server and how properly your database is tuned but most likely your Zabbix server will simply choke up with all of the data and you will start to experience the performance problems not only on the proxies but also on the Zabbix server and because of that all your monitoring environment can start to feel pretty bad you will receive a lot of false positives notifications no data triggers could start a fire and a lot of different bad things so long story short i do not recommend to change those parameters for how long to keep the backlog how often to send the data to the server only in the case if you really need it for some proper reasons and uh, you are aware of the things that might happen because of that so the config edited database created let's start the zabbix proxy systemctl start zabbix dash proxy remember from the first video if the service starts it doesn't mean that it is actually running so it is worth to check the log file and the logs are located in the var log zabbix zabbix proxy dot log and we can see that yep indeed the proxy started all the processes started immediately after the start of the process proxy received the configuration data from our server which has some length but actually at the moment proxy isn't monitoring anything we don't have any hosts assigned to this proxy we can see the last scene of the proxy which basically now is just a heartbeat proxy by default once per minute sends a heartbeat signal to the server and by this last scene you can verify if the communication between the proxy and the server actually is working so if everything is fine even if you don't have a data this should not grow higher than some kind of uh, 60 seconds definitely sorry for the beeps okay uh let's add some kind of the host so we have our zabbix server host this one zabbix server that this is an agent zabbix agent that is monitoring our local host and there are two options how you can add a host to be monitored by a proxy first of all from the configuration hosts click on the host then in the bottom monitored by the proxy choose which proxy update and the second option is administration proxies click on the proxy and then from this screen you can just move the hosts over to the proxy so we changed the 
Zabbix server host to be monitored by the Zabbix cookbook proxy. And we also need to change the config file. In this case, where we don't. No. No, we actually don't. This should work already. Availability is gray. What about the latest data? Zabbix server. We can check again the log file of the proxy. Nothing new. Oh, because uh, update of the configuration from the proxy side. Uh, this by default is happening only once per hour. I did change the configuration. I added host Zabbix server to be monitored by the Zabbix cookbook channel, but nothing, hap nothing happens because my proxy doesn't know that. And proxy will know that only after one hour, but in case of the active Zabbix proxy, there is an option to execute the runtime command by typing binary name Zabbix underscore proxy minus capital R, which is runtime command, config underscore cache underscore reload. And this forces Zabbix proxy to connect to the server and request a new configuration. We see that received configuration data from the server and enabling Zabbix agent checks on the host Zabbix server. Host became available. So right now I should see availability green again. We're again gathering the data from our local host machine, but at the moment agent is reporting to the proxy and proxy is reporting back to the server. We could verify this in administration proxies. So the last scene is dropping. So we are receiving the data. That's about it. Uh, what else? I guess that's it. So if you do have some kind of other questions, just post them in the comment. I will definitely answer all of them. And uh, see you in the next video. Thank you.